Okay, here we go. What's up, everybody? Appreciate you, uh, you guys chiming in tonight. Our um, weekly uh, live stream here on YouTube on the channel. Make sure you uh, drop a drop a like, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate everybody who uh, stops in and listens to me ramble. Tonight's topic is we got the whiteboard out. You got one of your guys' favorite activities. It's going to be a collaboration tonight with uh, with you, uh, you know, with the channel. Obviously, if you you can't make the live, if you're you know you're watching this on the podcast and or uh, watching this, um, you know, after the fact, which <clears throat> I know a number of my subscribers do. You know, drop me a comment. Let me know what you, uh, you know, some of the some of the areas of concern that we may or may not talk about tonight. But basically, what spawned this whole live stream tonight? Number one is we haven't done a top ten, top five, whatever junkyard, you know, hazard. Uh, you know, we haven't done a live stream like this in a while, so we're gonna at least talk about, you know, this stuff for you know 30, 45 minutes, hour, you know, whatever time it takes. It may take us into longer than that. I don't know. But it's going to be a collaboration with you in the channel. Uh, we're going to fill this whiteboard up. You know it's going to be more than 10, bro. So might as well just go ahead and get your popcorn, and uh, we'll start talking some Fox Body shit here in a minute. So um, big shout, first and foremost, big shout to the guys in green. They are my channel members. Uh, channel members help me do some of the things on the channel that uh, I otherwise couldn't do without them. So I appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, obviously, they're the guys in green. So big shout to you guys here in the chat thank you guys for what you guys do for me in the channel every month so big shout to you uh, another big shout to Halo motorsports number one sponsor on the channel outside of you know obviously tremix stiflers team z viking and mcleod i appreciate you guys for what you've done for the channel and my cars too as well um anyways oh i forgot stiflers no i said stiflers oh i wanted to actually um show you guys something with the stiflers we're going to be we're going to actually be giving away a couple banners, maybe a swag pack. I don't know what we're going to be doing tonight as far as giveaways concerned, but I did want to Tom Clark over in Brian over at Stifler sent me an item that I'm going to actually make a, sh a short video about, but I like to actually do stuff in the live stream as well to kind of maybe cheat and show you guys a little bit of, you know, what's coming up or whatever. But uh, yeah, um, got the two banners on the top of the black car right there. There's uh, one well, I guess you just have to wait to see. We're going to be giving them away later on in this live stream. Um, we've been doing a lot of that lately, and I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I think you guys would, you guys are enjoying that. We got a, a fluctuation of of a bunch of banners, you know, for um, for Ford Takeover. McLeod sent me a bunch. Tremick sent me a bunch. Hanlon had a couple. I had a couple old ones from Stiflers and Vengeance. So if you guys really like that shit, then I'll just continue to. You know, I'll hit I'll hit up these companies and ask them. I mean, it's kind of something a little bit different. It's kind of like garage swag. You know what I mean? You know, it's kind of hard to get these little, you know, these six foot banners to begin with. And, you know, they're not cheap when you do. So it's kind of nice to be able to hand them off a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with that. It's so sad to see the state of some of these cars are in. You're correct. So like I said, you know, uh, we were working on the black box body today. I was doing some fixes on it. And that's pretty much what kind of spawned me into, uh, you know, this whole live stream about, you know, some, some of the areas of concern. And, you know, we're going to start off with, you know, since I'm a stick shift sunroof car, you know, the black car is, you know, I'm not going to put it on the board, but, you know, I'm gonna tell you what happened earlier. Like we were changing, my car's been leaking. It literally ruined uh, the sunroof ABS board, which you guys know that have sunroof cars. Um, <laughs> the the uh, sunroof headliner is like a like a vinyl, right? It's got an ABS board there still, but it's vinyl and it's tucked into the seal, whatever. That shit sees, you know, over time it gets ripped and dry, you know, dry crack, whatever. But when, you're, when your sunroof seal leaks, and, and I'm not going to get into detail with it, um, it gets down into the, 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 you know, into the ABS board and just ruins the header panel. So my car hasn't had a header panel in a while. And I just been lazy and not put a, uh, you know, a new seal in it. But today I put a new seal in it today and it was just, it was a PETA. Um, I mean, literally I cut my hand because, you know, it's got, it's got metal like lining inside of it. I mean, it came out like literally just like evaporated. I mean, just 
as soon as I started peeling on it, it, it would break off. And it was like a, like an old twig. That's how old it was. And it was just like, you know, I was thinking to myself, man, this would be make, you know, this would make for a really good, you know, live stream to talk about like, you know, some of the areas like that, that are like super concerning. Um, you know, we, we were actually taking the console out to do some interior dyeing Cause you know, I'm going to be honest with you guys, my black car, my white car, 90, you know, 75% of the interior in there has been dyed. We dyed it here at the shop. And some of the, you know, the items like quarter panels, uh, door panels, we didn't dye those, but a lot of the items are, are just, you know, re interior restored or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, we were going underneath the console for you stick shift guys. And this is an area of concern. I can tell you right now, you know, I was driving with my black box body last night. You know, I was out with my kids and, and my girlfriend, Katie, and I could smell like my turbo exhaust. I could smell my turbo exhaust runs right by my transmission down my, uh, you know, trans transmission valley. And it, it just couldn't understand why, because, it might, you know, my tune wasn't rich. I, I, don't, I don't know what was going on with it. So I chalked it up to, I forgot to put the, I didn't forget, but in, in the haste of making the video for you guys with the Hanlon shifter for the TKX, who's, you know, got probably one of the, if not the best TKX shifter out there, um, I didn't put the ring down. So I just kind of set one on there and didn't do the due diligence. So I had to rip it all back out. And, you know, stick shift guys, that, that, that boot underneath your console, I guarantee you it's either, it's either torn, weather beat, or probably just flopping around underneath your console. Even in a car that might not have been touched for a while, that stuff dry rots. And what happens is, is you get exhaust up into your transmission tunnel, whether you're running, you know, especially if you're running like long tubes or you're running any sort of aftermarket exhaust, which is like 90% of the Fox bodies out there. So you'll get like that, that that smell like that's that that engine exhaust smell and shit you know what i mean so <clears throat> i've done the sunroof seal what a pain in the job and now it's just you got to be careful because like i said you can cut your hand taking the seal off but like it legitimately wasn't all that bad it was just really really crusty and we'll talk we'll get into the top 10 here in a second i'll, I'll get the board out but i just wanted to show you what we had going on here. So, and it wasn't, I mean, the seal was just tore up. And I don't know if you guys know, you can take your sunroof out, but you know, it was legitimately this, this seal right here. I mean, it, th this is uh, a seal from, I don't know if this is from NPD. I think this is from NPD. And it's a really nice piece that goes in your sunroof. It fit in pretty well. But I noticed that these were starting to rot real bad. So this is kind of something for sunroof guys. This is areas of concern. Listen, I've, I've watched a number of my buddies, you know, literally message me saying, hey, do you got any factory, do we got any factory sunroofs available? Because we don't have, you know, these things fell, you know, they, they just rotted off. And you won't even know they rotted off because these are, like in, in the, like a little plastic guide on top of the car. Once these go, the literally a good mile an hour, a good gust of wind, your sunroof can come flying out. So I wanted to show you guys kind of what spawned the reason for the uh, live stream tonight. And don't mind the mess in the background. We got the white cars under construction. As you already know, if you if you follow the channel, you already know why all those parts are sitting there on the ground. But anyway, moving on. I'm working on jack stands, the Harbor Freight mechanical transmission. I guess wheels are worth 100 bucks. It's funny because we just had a major failure on one of our engine stands. Um, cousin Fred was putting a 351 that we we're going to start digging into soon. And the whole engine stand broke. So I'm going to wallet it up, I guess. Good evening. A while back, you mentioned the value of a very solid Fox body. Are convertibles, four cylinders, automatic transmissions worth anything? Well, that's kind of like a, you know, back in the day, about 10, 15, 20 years ago, Gary, convertibles, four cylinders, and automatics, pretty much, if you had them in the same sentence, you weren't going to, they weren't very highly sought after. But, you know, in this day and age, a good four cylinder body is worth its weight in gold, period, because it hasn't been beat. Like if a case in point example, my SSP was whooped. 
I mean, it, for good, probably for good reason, because my SSP obviously was an ex-police patrol car. So, you know, it, it's seen nothing but wide open throttles and, and car chases is pretty much his whole life. So, you know, it, it, the torque boxes were all jacked up in it. God only knows how hard the people were on the car after that. I don't think it had very many miles past that, but you know, a good, a good coupe four cylinder, like body convertible LX hatch, whatever. Uh, keep that in mind. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, if it was a four cylinder conversion, a lot of people would be like, Oh, it's not worth as much as original V8, but you know, original V8 cars that aren't beat to shit or body wise or twisted up real bad. You know, they're, they're a dime a dozen or they're not a dime a dozen, but they're, they're, they're hard to find. Anyways, moving on. So here we go. We're going to collaboration. Uh, put my stands front. Okay. Malware clutch throw out. Putting a transmission on the four sucks, but it's almost done. Nice, man. Keep working at it, bro. So, all right. We are going to clear off the board and we're going to start getting into it. So this is a what we were talking about this is the code if you guys do neo 200 off at hanlon motorsports i think this code is still active you get 200 bucks off of the transmission swap not a transmission a swap and uh i think uh, he sold a couple swaps the past couple weeks so big shout out to you guys who use that code thank you so much but uh this was our 302 to 351 costs we're going to revisit this because this this wasn't completed um, we're going to actually talk about junkyard stuff and 351s. And I'm actually going to start, uh, I might collaborate with my buddy uh, SVT Dan because he actually told me something last week that one of the best, if not the best blocks you can get for a Terminator build is from a junkyard. So that's definitely something I like to learn new stuff, especially outside of the Fox body genre. And definitely uh, interested in figuring that out. Something about a Mark 8 motor or something. Does that sound right? So we might bring him back here on the channel and talk some Cobra Fox body shit. You know what I mean? You guys see that? All right, moving on. Definitely, I'm definitely down for another junkyard uh, live stream. I haven't done one of those in a while. Like, you know, we hit 30,000 subscribers, so big shout out to you guys. Gennaro, transmission swap. They have swap kits at his website. So at Hanlon Motorsports, Neo 200 off in the cart gets you $200 off. Thank you. If anyone interested, please post it. All right. I don't know why I'm using brake cleaner. It's I try to write big. <laughs> Here we go. Top 10 areas to look for. Give me the first one. I think I'm going to do it in blue. Our Fox bodies are now literally almost, what, 35 years old? At least the Euroclip one's 40 years old. Strut towers? Okay. Yeah, I got. I just hit 30,000, I think, yesterday. <laughs> Your traction compound. You mean the ten? You mean the ten pounds of traction compound on the back of my white car right there? You might be right. What's what's going on, Jason? Good to see you, brother. So uh, you guys don't get a chance to go check out uh, Race Life Photos over on uh, Facebook. He does a lot of um, you know uh, independent. I think it's what it's called, professional photography. Uh, he's also part of Stripper Glitter and D Team. So big shout out to Stripper Glitter and D Team for what you guys do for us here in Ohio. We are super spoiled with our no prep shit, guys. I'm not gonna lie to you. So, number one areas of concern. Let's go. We'll go one. We'll go with the strut towers. Okay. You guys see that? Is it, is it or is it too bright? You see it? I, I said one. Just give me one real quick. So strut towers for you. If you guys are just now getting into 
Fox body Mustang strut towers are probably one of the biggest areas of concern, even in the South. Um, just like these guys are talking about, obviously that's probably one of the first things you want to talk about. Now, when we say strut towers, we don't mean the bottom or the top of the strut towers. A lot of people that try to, you know, picture cars or try to sell cars on Facebook marketplace or, um, you know, just anywhere really for that matter they take a picture of the top of the tower and it's just like that doesn't show a shit like you have to actually the, the the reason for the concern in my opinion is you had your you know you had a lot of the uh the ac condenser or whatever that evaporator or whatever you had that thing was always like in, in in hot weather was always working so you had a lot of condensation in that area plus you had a header there heating it up so it was like always you know, uh, hot and cold and and, 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 and wet and condensation, whatever. And then on the other side, you had your brake booster and you had your brake, uh, you know, you had your brake proportioning valve that was either leaking, master cylinder started leaking. You know, you're talking about brake cleaner on the, on the strut tower on the driver's side that would literally peel its paint back, you know, and, and, and rust it. So that, that was my two theories on why towers, you know, it was, it wasn't a very good design. Uh, they should have never had like a tower inside of a rail. They should have had the tower outside of the rail. I think that would have probably helped a little bit, at least for the most part. <clears throat> Anyways, um, strut tower is definitely number one, number one, uh, not number one overall, but just that's a good one to start with. Um, you guys just seen what we did with the SSP, you know, torque boxes. And I didn't even realize how bad my torque boxes really were until we actually got, you know, you know, guy got the phone call from McBride Racing. And they basically said, your shit is screwed. So can you guys see that? Um, twisting of the body, torque boxes is a good one. That's for sure. Twisting of the body kind of goes hand and foot with torque boxes. Um, yeah, so... Maybe I should change the color. You guys can see that, right? Torque boxes, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, it's probably one of the weakest points in, 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 in the Fox bodies. Strut towers rock. Torque boxes rip. Um, the car twists. You know, putting full-length subframe connectors on your uh, Fox body Mustang is always a really, really good idea. You know, because, you know, once these torque boxes start to actually twist and start to rip, your, your whole car is going to start to twist. My SSP was literally so out of whack that they had to plumb bob like half the damn car like 10 times just to get my torque boxes to line up correctly. And that's exactly why we went to, you know, McBride Racing, because they're pretty familiar with, you know, this you know the fox platform itself because they own thunderbirds and they've worked on them quite a bit so you know you got to look out for those torque boxes and how you'll know is on the back of the torque box obviously you'll see rips and tears in it you know a lot of people do, don't use your torque box as a jack stand use your frame rail and if you use your frame rail preferably something like a block but uh, yeah, definitely something uh, bad right there. Give me another one. Number three. What's up, 650? It's good to see you, brother. Okay. I'm going to give you one that we just talked about. We talked about the sunroof seal, right? So sunroof seal, sunroof clips. And somebody just mentioned it right here in the quarter panels. Now, I'm going to try to put that all on the board at once. I'm just going to put sunroof problems. Now, you guys in convertibles can go ahead and chime in as well. There's a lot of convertible problems as well. So sunroof problems... 110 percent you know you got the sunroof behind me with the seal right you got the you got the clips up top that literally your sunroof will fly out of your car if you don't check this shit 
you see me how easy it was to take the, the, the sunroof out. Literally, you pinch. Let me show you. And you know, we'll talk about you know hard body, uh, you know hard top and the convertible stuff too. You know, if somebody uh, wants to bring it up. But literally, if you got a sunroof, you know this stuff is spring loaded here. So you see that clips back. It comes out and comes in really easy. So you can you can clip it out, clip it back in right here. And it just slides on these two, these two little things right here. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up the sunroof again, sunroof seal, sunroof clips, because somebody just mentioned rear quarters. Right here, my black car is rotted right there. I cut it out. I don't have a quarter on either side of my car because my sunroof, sunroof drain clogged. Like, I was having issues with my seal, okay, which we just fixed, right? I was having issues with the drainage, which was getting sand and garbage in it because the seal wasn't doing its job. And then where the drains, uh, the, the rear seal, excuse me, the rear drains for the sunroof drain in the back of your quarter panels. So it's not uncommon. Peel that, you take that quarter panel out, look inside of that pocket back here. I bet you you got a ton of dirt and shit. And there's actually a couple little uh, little holes that factory put in there, little, 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 um, yeah, like little factory drainage holes that are probably clogged too, just in case sun, you know, just for, you know, when there's condensation or wetness in the back of the car that it can get out. So <clears throat> what's up, Turbo Man 351? Sunroof problems, folks. And the same thing kind of goes with convertible. Convertible has a latch problem. The latches start to wear out. So they start to stretch. Uh, you know, you get the the top will start getting water in between the top where it comes to the top of the windshield. You know, that weather stripping gets beat. I mean, you're talking, like I said, 35 plus year old stuff. This is stuff as they age, this shit's just going to get worse. You know, sunroof cars, you know, if you, if you pick up a parts car or, or a project car, excuse me, that's a sunroof car. First thing you need to do is take that sunroof out, take an air, air can of air or air hose or something, blow the damn sunroof stuff out you know there's four drains in each corner blow the sunroof out change the seal and go dig out all the crap that's been there for 35 years in the quarter panel and in the pillar crazy yep windshield frame yep <clears throat> rear hatch and seal around the hatch glass so what that does is actually makes your hatch rat uh, rattle so like if your hatch is rattling because it doesn't have a good seal on it anymore. It's just all the weather. I'm going to tell you all the weather stripping. We're just going to put that on there. There's a reason why Fox Days of Christmas, guys, I'm always giving away a bunch of damn seals. Because legitimately, outside of door handles, the shit just wears out like tires. Like, I can guarantee you, if you haven't changed your weather seals at this point, I'm talking the door, sunroof, rear hatch, um, sun, uh, the convertible top, uh, T tops even worse. I mean, this, you know, if you pick up a project car, you got a car sitting in a garage and you're, you're staring at it and you love it, and you, and you wax it up and everything looks good, blah, blah, blah. I can guarantee you, if you change those seals, it's going to change the way that car is. Leaky trunk. Yep. There's, I mean, the, the hats too. So we're just going to put weather stripping because legitimately weather stripping, I can't tell you enough. And it goes for the shit in the inside of the door too all the rubbering the rubber inside like the, the the window like this crap right here right inside here all this seal garbage like look at my look look at my black car look it's ripped actually i cut that out and put a piece in but that whole thing is ripped up the side here i need to change mine as well it's terrible and, you know, we don't think about this stuff because it costs money. And the only thing we give a shit about is going fast. Or, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> tell me I'm wrong, but not entirely right. But, you know, you care about, you know, the wheels and stance and camshafts. And we don't give a damn about no weather seals. <laughs> but you really should, you know, take take a little time and change that stuff. Now, you know we're going to do a lot more than just 10, right? So, 
Yeah, we're going to get right into that, Tyler. For sure, Matt. Front seats. Shit, front seats got wings and padding. And I don't think I even own, I'm not going to lie to you, I own a lot of Fox body seats. I don't think I own, but maybe one or two that actually are decent driver seats. They're just always destroyed. Always. Um, and, it, and it's kind of like, it's not really something, um, you know, weather stripping is kind of something you don't pay attention to. And that's really why I want to kind of go with the live stream, the stuff that you, you know, you're like, oh shit, I didn't think about that, you know, cause you just don't pay attention to it. Seats are an obvious one because I mean, you open the door and you see a seat and it looks like it's a, looks like the padding has been beat out of it since 1992. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely something that, of, of concern. Um, I mean, they make aftermarket seat brackets, uh, like Team Z has aftermarket seat brackets um, that you can just hard mount your your actual like seat to the floor if you wanted to. Um, they also make repl- not Team Z, but uh, there's m- multiple resto sites that actually have you know really good uh, seat rails that are replacements. Uh, you, sometimes you can find them you know on on eBay or Facebook or something that's you know in good shape. The the main thing about the seat, listen, let me tell y'all a, a little secret. The seat framing, like if you really don't want your seat, if you have good seat framing in your car right now, like right now, and shit's not broken, I guarantee you it's starting to crack. Um, right there where the, uh, it's just it's just sheet metal. It's, it's, not, it's not even very thick. It's like 16 gauge. Um, it's like pinched weld. It's like pinched over and it's like curved, okay? If you want your seat to last, your seat rails, gusset it. Like I did my turbo kit. Like, if you watched the last video with us taking the white car's top end apart, guys, I've been beating the shit out of that on three kit for how many years now? And for me not to have any fatigue or cracking in metal is beyond me. But what we did do, and what I'm telling you to do with seat rails, I'm using an example, is we gusseted the turbo T4 flange. We re-welded all the way around it, all the way through the valley weld, and we armor plated the whole thing. That way it was super reinforced where the most pressure was at. Same thing for seat rails. You know, you got the seat rails that the, the, that the seat slides on. Well, it comes, it curves down and then comes into like a flat, right? You know, this, this, that's where your 15 mils at. So you, 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 what you want to do is you want to gusset that corner on both front and rear and just literally just weld a little gusset on the corners. You could reinforce your seat rails. I mean, if you had a buddy who, who's, who, who's decent with a welder, take 10 minutes. You can pull the whole seat out and do it with the seat there. I mean, I don't know if I would suggest welding around fabric, but it is what it is. You could fix them, too. I mean, that's something you can do if they're not too rotted out. <clears throat> I have crusty tints on my rear window, but I'm spending many thousands to do. <laughs> so I've had so many tints happen. Um, tinning is it's it, if you're going to tint your fox you know buy or use good tint i don't know if it's the red dye in it i know tin eventually all wears out over you know gets mixed up with the sun or whatever but you know i don't know how many tints i pulled off glasses that i've sold here on the you know on, on the on the job that were all purple like literally were purple like like the viking it was crazy so i have a nice sunroof car except for the driver's door fell off so that's one of the issues with uh, sunroof like i said sunroof problems number three like again these aren't in very particular order we're just talking some shit here so we're just going to continue you know just adding stuff to the list um should be more like a b c d whatever but we're going to go ahead and keep doing it in numeric order but sunroof that's the sunroof problems because one of the drains is right there you know at the pillar so I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure really, uh, you know, you got to check that pillar. Listen, that pillar inside behind your fender, okay, it's got that plastic, whatever. Um, yeah, splash guard. Behind that's got like sound deadening and all this other garbage, like legitimately should probably be pulled out at this point. How do you get a cup? Um I got this from 417 Fox. You guys know uh, Mike Johnson, 417 Fox. Big shout out to him. 
Mikey Mike. He makes our hats here on the channel. And uh, he's probably going to start making most of our merch. I know he's a busy guy, so it's tough to, you know, tough to get him, you know, he's, he, he does merch for a lot of people. So, all right, give me number five, strike towers, torque boxes, sunroof problems, which we talked about a little bit of convertible problems with the latches and the, the window seal and the front that kind of goes hand and foot with the sunroof. Um, hard top, you really wouldn't have a problem. You know, there's not really much problem up there outside of, I will tell you this. Now, for you hardtop coupe hatchback guys, underneath of your headliner, and this is the reason why I'm telling you this shit, underneath of the headliner, you have a brace bar, okay? And if you look at my coupe videos from my SSP, little did I know that the brace bar that I actually took from one of my, uh, one of my parts cars, like there's actually body sealer that holds the brace. There's actually a brace you, if you have a sunroof car and you're trying to turn it into a hard top car, that's not really all that big of a deal. You can do that pretty easy. Um, I've actually cut and sold a number of actual hard tops where people actually deleted the, the whole sunroof because there's a brace that goes right there that even sunroof cars still have that, that would naturally be through the glass if it wasn't there. But um, that if, if your roof is wobbling, it's probably because the body sealer where the brace and the actual flimsy little roof meet. What you can do is drop your headliner and you can spray body sealer back in there and your roof won't wobble anymore. I don't know if anybody, you guys, I don't know if that helps somebody, but that's what we're here to do. So, I mean, I'm going to put roof wobble and that's what I mean by that. Um, you specifically for the hard top guys, and this is pretty much for a lot of the Fox body guys. So roof wobble. And I didn't really discover that until until I noticed I noticed it on my SSP when we had to rebuild like practically the whole damn roof. So like I said, to reiterate, underneath your headliner hardtop, there's a brace bar that goes across. There's a body sealer there that comes loose and or breaks. And that's why your roof wobbles, because it'll just sit there and wobble between the old sealer that's not even attached anymore and the brace. So... <clears throat> My tit was put on the previous owner, so I had no idea the age, but it needs replacing. My issue is that everyone wants to scrape the, the defrost line. Yeah, that, that's tough to take off without uh, taking some of that off. Fatboy Fox, what's up? I had a seat turn into a rocking chair when I was trying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll happen. What's up, Dan Watts? Racing in the house. Good to see you, buddy. We were, I was just talking about you earlier in the channel that we were going to maybe talk some Cobra Fox body shit um, about some junkyard. Maybe, uh, I don't know if you got a, a list of junkyard stuff for Cobra people. That would be cool to kind of like collaborate, you know, the, the, the uh, what is that? New Edge? Is that right? It's not S197. What, what's, is it just called, uh, is this called New Edge, right? 9904? Somebody help me out there. The driver is always the biggest problem. Don't overdrive. <laughs> Never. Use steam to read. Oh, that's not a bad idea, Scott. What's up, Scott Turner? Is that is that my man Scott Turner down there in Tennessee? I see that car rolling out, boy. <laughs> headlights holding water. That's a good one. So headlights. Um, Ten areas. Let's talk about headlight problems because there's more than just one problem with that headlight. Guys, you buy a Fox body this day and age, 35, 40 years old, nine times out of 10, their headlight's going to suck. They look garbage. They're either cracked, they're faded in the amber spot. There's, there's issues. So we'll, we'll, we'll say headlights. Headlight problems. And uh, matter of fact, speaking of headlight problems, that's what Dan was just telling me about on his Cobra, something about his headlight didn't fit or something. I don't know. You were talking about that when we were down there and uh, up there in Michigan. I 
I was in the shadow watching. I got you. So we're going to probably set up a whole live stream for that, Dan. You know, Cobra versus Fox Body. I think that would be really cool. Um, headlight problem. So if you bought a Fox Body, have a Fox Body that hasn't had the headlights addressed already, and you actually have some really nice headlights in there, you probably want to go scuff those and just seal them with another can of 2K Clear or something. Because I'm going to guarantee you that eventually that glue and or whatever is going to get it's gonna it's just gonna fall apart like this is the age we're in i mean these cars you, you can't expect two pieces of plastic glued together is going to last forever especially in a car that vibrates as much as these cars do you know whether it's being an engine camshaft or just driving shit out of it so headlight problems bucket uh in the back of a headlight there's a bucket buckets like to crack it throws the whole alignment off the nice thing about buckets is they're adjustable so first headlight problem i would tell you is the buckets on the back are, are crack headlight adjustments out headlight clip and or broken if you got a wobbly headlight you got a bucket problem what i mean by that is you you know unscrew the set the three seven sixteenths buckets bolts in the back whatever unplug your you, you know your, your main headlight beam pull the damn light out and there's a bucket okay that attaches to all of them you don't even i don't even think you can buy these new anymore but some some headlights come with them some don't and there's little clips that just clip it in now you could actually take the bucket of, off of the headlight and there's like a phillips there that you could actually adjust where the beam goes so if you really got savvy with it you could actually have it so you can take your headlight in and out really quick and you can set your car's beams like just staring at like a garage door right at night or in the evening or something you you know because you might have one headlight that's up one headlight that's down you might be all over the damn place most people don't care but like high beams and regular beams especially when you put leds in kind of makes a difference you know what i mean so buckets being broken behind it the seal on the headlights are broke you know starting to to, to weather which means that you know the glue is starting to come loose it's getting water inside of them um to be honest with you i really think that all headlights should have a couple of drill holes in the bottom of it where you don't see or in the corners where you don't see just to get a little bit of air in there just to kind of make sure that the, the during the heat or the cold or or any sort of inclement weather they don't like you know keep heat inside of them or keep uh, you know keep condensation or whatever so you know headlights that are yellowed uh literally can be they can be restored i mean if you have a good functional headlight no matter what shape it's in as long as it's not broken cracked or garbage you can restore it um, the corner lights really kind of suck because the amber part of the corner light starts to fade. That amber actually fades out. So finding really good corner lights, if you find them in a junkyard, you find them at like a swap meet or something, buy them. So they're probably cheap anyways, but that corner that corner light's always a, always a bitch. I mean, that thing is always broken and or faded or whatever. So headlight problems, boys. I mean, Fox Body has six headlights. So, you know, three on each side. It's not like it's a one piece. I'm with you, Scott. I think they're looking for an easy way out. I have a heavy duty steamer. Droopy tag on rear bumper, rear bumper cover. Oh, okay. So that's a good one, man. I'm going to go ahead and go with that Fox Life. I like it. I like it. Number seven. And this is probably goes for all genres of Mustangs that have a rear bumper, including SN95 and New Edge and whatever. Let's just call it up to 04 because that's when Fox Body. The, the cool Fox body platform ended. Anyways, guarantee you that rear bumper brace is rotting, bent, or falling out. Not so much in the south, but they get warped. Uh, it's kind of a really bad design. I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of the rear bumper cover right on the top, now, and this happens for LXs too. Bumper. Damn it. Trying to, trying to write crooked. Bumper brace. Like legitimately, tell me I'm wrong here. That bumper brace is always bent to shit. If you look at my bumper over here, I still got a wave in it. I got a newer, I got a new one in, but that's a Cobra aftermarket bumper and it doesn't have the lip on it. If you look underneath your bumper, you're just now getting in the Fox bodies like we've been talking about. Probably that shit is bent or needs replaced. 
going to put a new bumper on it because it's usually probably got some exhaust holes in it or something. Man, back back 20 years ago, that was the cool thing to do. Put some big old three-inch holes in the back of the bumper on GTs and then make them uh, you know, bring the exhaust through. <laughs> How many of y'all did that? Don't lie. We, they used to also cut them like uh, put like a little U in the corners. Don't lie. <clears throat> What's up, Jeff Wins? Good to see you. Walmart used to sell a steamer that was budget friendly to remove window tint. I didn't even really, th I didn't even know that you could use a steamer. I guess I never really thought about that. Maybe just using like a hair dryer or something, just kind of peel the tint off, like get it hot for whatever reason. <clears throat> door handles, yes. So door handles are an obvious one. I'm trying to get some of the, uh, that's a good one, KP, for sure. I'm trying to get some of the uh, stuff in here on this list that wouldn't be obvious door handles like i have metal door handles on my my black fox behind me and in my white fox but i've, I've seen them with plastic ones they're just always a menace i know that lmr sold those um those door handles those they're like shaved or whatever i guess they're kind of cool but i don't you know i don't really get into that look does that make any sense so, yeah. Is it hard to remove freeze plugs from the back of the heads toward firewall? Yeah. I mean, you have to pull the heads off. What's up, Ramon? What's going on, 216? Here's your, here's his, uh, big shout out to Ramon. He's the one who actually sent me this whiteboard. We've been, we done word of shit out, brother. <laughs> uh, you can also use Windex. In a black garbage bag and let it sit in the sun to dry and the tint will come off. Really? Hmm. Yes. Good one, Dave. Steering wheel wobble. I actually did a video about this. Now, this is really... more aimed towards 87 89 the reason why i mean 90 93 if your steering wheels wobbles most likely you probably got a problem with your bearings inside of your actual uh, you know it's not adjustable inside of your airbag style you know column you might need to replace the whole column um but like 87 89 had a like two piece it, it had tilt to it so it had teeth on it you have to check the teeth and we're going to put that in here put teeth too because on a tilt yeah we're going to get to that on the tilt the teeth on the tilt would actually chip off like from people just pulling on the wheel too much you know pulling it up pulling it down whatever um there's two bolts you have to take the multi-function switch off you don't even have to unplug it. Just make sure the car's off. Um, there's two, um, I want to say they're half-inch bolts behind the the multi-function switch. You want to pull one out and put some blue Loctite on it, put it back in. I guarantee you if you have steering wheel problems with 87, 89, specifically tilt, um, which is a majority of those cars, then that, that that's the reason why it's wobbling. So I did a whole video on it. <clears throat> so that's we're actually going to add that right now, Rusty. This is probably my number one safety. And I talk about this actually all the time. This almost got me in an accident about 20 years ago. And let me explain. I talked about it before. I think we have one here in the wall. You're steering like lots of ice cream stuff to begin with. I guarantee you if your car's got a couple hundred thousand miles or 100, 150,000 miles and you haven't done a aftermarket, you know, steering rack or whatever, your rag joint, 
this is this is what the column connects to these u joints you can see these u joints are this actually came out of my white car this u joints actually messed up right here this is a dangerous thing right here these things rip really bad rag joints get rid of this shit. just get rid of it get a solid knuckle one just get rid of it i've seen i've seen a number of cars actually get wrecked because of that and i drove a car home about 20 years ago see i hit an rv when my rag joint broke that thing sucks at least if you're gonna if you're not gonna replace it with a knuckle because the damn things are like 280 dollars um then do yourself a favor and at least service the rag joint like i hate that thing that thing causes more slop in a, in a steering column than anything that i can think of i mean outside of the u joints like being bad like that one's actually a good um a good example because we actually did that we took that rag joint out of my white car in a video and if you remember how bad it was i mean it was just like dude i'm i'm going a buck 50 plus on this car i got a damn rag joint on there i'm like what i'm doing so we haven't actually pulled it out of the black car yet either so i'm over here preaching to myself too and it's a good reminder i mean it sucks those things are like 280 dollars man <clears throat> I also have steering wheel wobble from my understanding the hole in the steering wheel can oblong causing slack. That's correct. Yep. Multifunction switch. So uh, another thing I want you guys to do, and we've talked about this on the channel, but it's always really good to reiterate. Because, you know, now that we have 30,000 subscribers, there's a lot more subscribers to the channel than the last time I probably addressed this, you know, with the, the hazards and stuff. Cause we're going to go back to that. We're going to actually have working live streams like this where you, you know, to, to, to kind of teach and show some of the people that are just now getting into the channel, our channel is specifically on live streams, you know, to, to like let them know that you know, it's, with podcast shit out now where I can convert this to a podcast as well. It's always a good thing as well. So I can show, you know, you know, have the information out there. So but number 10, um gt switch okay so your, your your headlight switch specifically you guys with gt switches so we're going to talk about a little bit of wiring because this is the shit that nobody's paying attention to until your car is sitting in a ball of flames take your damn headlight switch out and check it, it takes two minutes all you need is a screwdriver like don't pry it out but there's actual clips behind it it's not that hard gt specific now i will tell you that lx would be the same thing you see that yeah try to write big enough and bold enough that you can read it headlights you know headlight switch dude holy shit the gt headlight and i don't know if it's the same for other cars like sn and new edge anybody who owns one can maybe chime in or whatever but the headlight switch I've literally taken them out of cars like dash harnesses where we restored them and sold them where the headlight switch was literally melted. Like, I don't even know how it still worked. And specifically with GT cars, um, it's probably one of my number one pet peeves with the harnesses is something that you need to look for because your car would be sitting there asleep in the garage. And I don't want to scare y'all, but I mean, you're talking live wires that can just melt in plastic and just what happens then? I don't know. You belt, you ba your battery melts down and burns the whole car up. It's super easy to check. Did we get an ad? What are they doing? Like they just changed the way, like, you know, I turned the monetization on but then they got all these extra options now. So let me change that so you guys don't get that. I don't know why it's doing an ad in the middle of my live stream. That makes no sense. Hang on a second, bear with me. Like they just changed the whole thing. Let me see if, let me see if, let me, let me see if that helps. Let me know if that happens. You guys, let me know if that ad happens, especially in the middle of the live, because like I said, they've been changing like, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I'll be able to convert this live to a podcast as well, which I'm going to do. 
So they've been changing kind of the way the monetization and the way the ads are popping up inside of these lives and podcasts. So, you know, bear with me if you see that stuff. I don't intentionally do any of that live. Like if you're watching this or listening to it after it's live, then it's going to happen automatically. So I do apologize if it happened and, and you know, while it was live. <clears throat> Anyways, GT headlight switch, 100% piece of shit. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> like um, it's not really difficult to pull it out. And, you know, you just look behind the switch. There's two little clips. You, you, you push the uh, clips in headlight pops out or headlight switch pops out i mean you're, i mean you're not going to hurt anything nothing's going to break pull it out and check the big plug which i think i probably have one that's all jacked up to show you if it's not messed up leave it alone but keep an eye out You guys get the point. What you're looking for is a plastic that's warped, burned, or cracked. So that's what you're looking for. I did an ad on my TV, but my not on my phone. Super weird. I don't know why it's doing that. So I do apologize. Anyways, TFI module's a good one. Um, we're going to stick with wiring, and I'm only going to give you a couple of the major ones with wiring. I don't want to... Um, I don't want to really get it. The wiring can be its own discussion all the way around. So GT headlight switch. That's a really good one that's wiring issue. Now I would say AC wide open throttle. We're going to go with that one. AC watt. About 80% of you Fox body guys out there, I guarantee you that that wire right there is stripped, cracking, falling apart, or melted. 100%, 75%, 80%, four out of five Fox bodies. Go out there and look at it. AC wide open throttle relay is found right next to your mass air plug. Uh, also next to your, I'm going to give you one more wiring thing and then we're going to stop with the wiring because that's a whole nother conversation. Um, and we've actually done it here on the channel, but we haven't done it in like a year and a half. So we're going to revisit it. Um, AC watt is next to your mass air meter, uh, where you, if you have an airbag car, it's where your airbag is over by your mass air meter, basically right where your, um, O2 harness plugs in. So if you know where that's at, it's that relay right there. Now on 92, 93s, you got multiple relays, not to be confused. 92, 93 really didn't have this problem. They kind of rectified it and they didn't tell nobody. I'm sure it had something to do with some sort of freaking recall and shit but 87 91 guarantee 80 percent of them four out of five fox bodies that haven't had their wiring touched guarantee you that the, the ac wide open throttle i mean literally the, the i think it's the pink and black wire pink and white wire or the pink and blue it's the hot wire i mean that whole thing you could literally probably run your fingers over the wire and it just crumble i mean and you're talking about live wires that are just like hanging around metal shit so big problem my supervisor had hired, uh, that hired me at UPS 27 years ago, had an 88 GT ignition switch caught fire. So that's where we're at. Good one. That was my next one. Now, this one's also a pretty easy one to check. Ignition switch. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a 9093 or an 8789. Your ignition switch is found underneath of all your bezels. And literally, if you have a Phillips screwdriver, you can take the bezels off really quick and just unclip them. Your ignition switch has two tamper-proof gold. I don't even know the size. Don't ask me. I don't know. Um, but they are tamper-proof, so you will need the tamper-proof bit to get them out, if I'm not mistaken. But if your ignition switch moves at all, and like there's a little rod in there that actually catches on your, you know, your ignition so when your ignition turns or whatever um probably one now as far as replacements are concerned 
there's a lot of really good replacements to put in there, but ignition switch legitimately will burn your car down. Um, GT headlight switch will burn your car down. Um, and you won't even know what happened. You'll be like, I, I don't even know what happened. Like, why is my car sitting in a ball of flames? This shit. You're welcome. Go out to your car. If you haven't messed with your car, don't know anything about it. Um, have it at least looked at it. It takes two minutes to look at this stuff. Now, at that point, you probably want to rectify the situation, especially with the GT headlight switch. The ignition switch will definitely uh, has been a culprit of more cars getting burnt than, than, than you can imagine. On top of batteries getting overloaded from wires that have melted together like an ignition switch and you know there's your battery blows up in front of the in, in the engine bay so i have 84 t-top the locking arm came loose off the handle and caused the driver t-top to become loose and rattle damn yeah that's actually a good idea trent so i'm going to go ahead and mention that um legit I, I probably don't have the right one. I don't know if somebody's going to, oh, Neo, you ain't got the right one. You, you're not talking to this. But, you know, I bought one. You know, it's always good to have these around. Just a little cheap one. I don't even know if this is automotive. They actually have automotive ones. But this is a good buy, boys. It's like 15 bucks, bro. This could this could save your fox body. You know what I mean? Just, I'll just keep it in the back. You know, you can mount these on cages and shit. I mean, I don't even think this is a car one, but at least it'll work. I don't know. Maybe. Whatever. Hmm. Extinguishers. $15 insurance that your car's not going to burn up in front of you. So. Son of a. This thing's about to go off on my. <laughs> Dan, you, you cursed me, Dan Watts. What's wrong with you, bro? Curse me. <laughs> That's because I have his front plate. <laughs> I hope he didn't drop the transmission on him because last time he told me I made him laugh. Yeah, he was under the car and he like literally dropped dropped shit in his head or whatever. I don't know. Explains explains a lot. Anyways, I have these in all my cars. My white car, uh, actually the white car does, I don't race with it because it's not mounted, but uh, it's right there on the trailer. But I, I street drive my black car quite a bit now. Like I'm not interested in racing this car at all. And I think that uh, my dad's got one in his. I think cousin Paul's got one in uh, Sandy's, Sandy's ride. So. So I think ABC, I don't know. There, somebody had mentioned something before. I don't know if we even have the right one, but hey, I got something. It's always that's always good to have a. That's a good one, man. That's good, Trent. This <laughs> fox body fire truck. Look, I don't know how many fox bodies I know that have literally. You know, I would rather tell you that it's a possible issue versus you know watching your you know hearing you uh say that you know seeing it on the on the internet you know what i mean that that uh you know hey my my my, my car you know burned to the ground for whatever reason you know what i mean so I'm trying to make sure that my oh what's up roy abc is fine but you get the co2 charged you won't make a mess Welcome back, man. I haven't seen uh, Roy in forever. Welcome back to the channel membership too, brother. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, let me make sure that uh, my settings for my audio are good. Oh, shit. I had the wrong one. I'm about to switch it up, boys. Let's see if this works. Let's see if it sounds better. Oh, so much better. Sorry about that. You probably had seat belts, ditch them for the harness. 
So, 13. We're just going to keep filling it up. Give me something. 10 areas of concern. Strut towers, torque boxes, sunroof problems. Had about 15 of those problems. Weather stripping, all of them. Roof wobble. This is shit that you don't normally get from other... You know, other videos, you know, this is stuff that, you know, from the years, 20 years of me messing around with Fox bodies that I've seen that just random garbage that you just like, why does my roof wobble? Well, that's why. You know, headlight problems. There's all kind of, why is my headlight pointing toward the ceiling? Heater core is a, a pretty given one. Clutch quadrant, that's actually... We're gonna put. We're gonna put. Um, actually, I'm gonna do clutch quadrant, cable, and AOD shifter. All right, here we go. Pay attention. T5 and AOD guys. Here we go. We talked about strut. That was like the first one, Super Dave. Shifter. Cable. Clutch and quad. Can you see that? Hell no. Son of a. Maybe I should have used like red. It might have came in better. I don't know. I just changed my lights in the shop and I made it super bright. Cable. Quad. All right, we'll just go cable and quad. You guys get it. So, T5 cable, I guarantee that your factory clutch cable is stretched. Now, also, your factory clutch cable mount that mounts it to the firewall, it's bushings probably junk. Um, which leads me to the quadrant in a stick shift car is two pieces, which is really kind of a bad scenario because there's like teeth on the two pieces and they get wore out. Like it'll self adjust or whatever the hell you want to call it. Best thing for you to do with a stick shift car do If you're doing a T5 or a clutch swap or doing something maintenance-wise on your stick car, clutch, clutch quad and cable is a very, very common and very sought-after change in your, in your Fox body. And this isn't just Fox bodies, but when I say Fox bodies, I mean all the way up to 04. I'm, a, I'm not a hydraulic clutch cable guy. I'm a mechanical clutch cable guy. So changing your quadrant to a... Um, like a three, uh, two or a three tooth when having the, the long, the, you know, the hooks, the long hooks, uh, having a firewall adjuster, which is literally like a mount for your cable. Like it takes the whole rubber bushing out of your cable and you literally can adjust your cable and stretch right there at the firewall. And then I recommend if you're going to change a clutch cable on a Fox body, I would go ahead and, you know, obviously I'm going to tell you to call Hanlon Motorsport, and for good reason. Bob Hanlon, banging Bob, you guys know him. He's a legend in the stick shift community. He told me years ago, he's like, if you're going to run big headers, aftermarket exhausts, or turbo headers and all that shit, he's like, you should probably just go ahead and run the SN95 cable, which is about 10 inches longer than a Fox body cable. How many of you guys in stick shift cars had that cable literally sit right next to your header and wrap right around underneath of the motor mount? Like, there's not a whole lot of throw there. And like, there's a lot of heat that causes that cable to not only melt inside, but then it causes friction and causes it to stretch. What's nice about an SN95, New Edge, whatever cable is there longer. You, you can literally unclip the bracket from an SN95 cable and clip the Fox body bracket in. And you can actually route it more of a throw, which makes it gives it a, a cleaner throw on and gets it away from the heat and shit. So I know I kind of went off on a tangent, but that's really a common problem with T5s. You know, people missing gears, people, you know, not, you know, people pissed because the adjustment's not right. If you just go out and get 100, I think it's 100 bucks. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Hamlin. 
I guess like a hundred bucks. You get a clutch quad cable set. Say, hey, I want to get the the the, the, the SN95 one that Neo uses. It's the same price. Uh, you know, you I would even recommend wrapping it in heat wrap to keep it away from heat. So that's a that, I'm off my tangent now, but that's a real big problem. You know, clutch. You know, cable stretch. Um, quadrant failure. I mean, that's stick shift stuff. I mean, at this age, that shit's all going to fail eventually anyways. But let's go to the AOD and what I've learned on Cousin Paul and Sandy's car and, and over the years is the AOD cable comes out of adjustment and there's a clip at the bottom that goes on to the actual um, you know, shift lever, lever or whatever you want to call it. So this big bracket that's underneath for V8, you know, mainly for V8, because I think four cylinders a little bit different bracket. But if you look at the bottom of the shifter, there's a big metal bracket on an AOD. And then, you know, your cable comes down, bolts to it, and then it goes up to the AOD and it clips into the actual lever. There's just a little clip there that holds the damn cable in place. And that all that can get rotted and rusty or whatever and can cause your car not to go into first, second, drive, whatever. I don't know. So big issues with cables and quadrants and you know this is stuff like you know hey i'm gonna look at that because i watch neo's live stream just take a peek at it you can replace this stuff and it makes worlds of difference you know what i mean and it's stuff that's going bad and you don't even know i mean outside of the obvious <clears throat> so door pins are definitely something uh it's kind of more of an obvious thing door pins are a pain in the ass to replace sort of um if I know they're not easy, and I haven't done some in a while, thank God. But um, you know, door pins are door pins and door handles are just common. And what I'm seeing a lot of is is door rod, door handle rods, because it, it means you have to go inside and and actually, you know, change the rod that the handle, you know, because it's all bent up from where it was all jacked up or whatever. So. Yeah, there's so many things to talk about, guys. I mean, I could sit here all night talking Fox body shit, but I wanted to really get into like some of the most major. I mean, and this is something that we're going to continue to talk about. I mean, you know, I'll I'll make sure that I don't re you know, you know, revisit this stuff that we've already talked about. I mean, there's just things all over your Fox body at this point that 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 literally need to be changed. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Uh, I'm going to add another one that I just thought about. And we talk about this, you know, we talk about this on the channel all the time is your bushings, all of them. Now this is for all the Fox bodies up to 04. And what I mean by bushings is your rear axle bushings uh, on your control arms, your front axle or front control arm bushings, your ball joints, I'm going to put ball joints there. A lot of people that, you know, get these cars, they don't pay attention to that shit. That ball joint could be dry as a bone inside and it's getting ready to break. Bushings and ball joints. Um, obviously, you go into more of a race setup. You go into more of a spherical heim joint set. You know, you, you, get, you get more of a, you know, a harsher ride, of course, but. You know, you don't have to worry too much about any sort of play in the bushing and stuff. <clears throat> they make a DEI shield for it. For what? Stock quad. And is that a stock quad? Yes. Tire outdated. <laughs> uh, fuel pump wiring. Uh, for fuel pump wiring. Okay. I'm thinking about mounting my extinguisher on the metal panel behind the back seat metal panel oh you mean the actual seat itself yeah man i appreciate that bama appreciate that you guys didn't see another ad did you did i fix that all right let's give away a banner real quick is hanlon still in the house On the door handle replacement, do you use rivets or bolts? I use bolts. Another electrical issue I had in mind is the map lights and vanity lights. Okay, so that's a good one that we're going to talk about, TJ, on another live stream. 
um, sun visors, um, parasitic loss. We're going to talk about parasitic loss on a, on a future live stream. I mean, we're going to revisit all this shit. I mean, there's a lot of parasitic loss inside of a fox body itself. <clears throat> My 96 had a worn steering rack. When I when I got it, it amazed me how, how much play Mustangs I drove that had a worn rack. Jeez. So we're going to give away a one of the two banners that we're going to give away tonight. It just sucks to ship them. Like 10 bucks a piece. You'd think I'd be able to get them for first class, but they're too heavy. So... Give away some garage swag tonight. This is the first one of two. You guys see this on back of my uh, on my garage door. Yep, six foot Hanlon banner. Big shot to Hanlon. Uh, five foot, because you know I ain't tall, right? So. All right, hashtag Halen for the garage swag. We'll let this run for a minute. I'll cont I can still uh, I can still read the comments while you guys. So hashtag uh, yeah hashtag Halen for the banner. Um, it's free. I'll ship it to you. Give you the email address. I know I got chat lag, so there's got to be a gazillion things pop up here. Why is that so blurry? Hmm. I don't know why happened. Why my uh, stream yard is so laggy when it comes to chat. So I'm sorry if I missed some of you guys' questions like late. Um, you know, we do have another uh, banner to give away as well. So we will do that. We grab some tape so I put a name on it. So I grabbed a couple uh, like prop items that we were talking about. Like this is a quad, this is just an aftermarket cheapy, whatever. I mean, it'll work, but you know, the after the, the, the Fox, the, the, the factory Fox body one is plastic and has two pieces on it. This, this will definitely take care of business for sure. So I seen this sitting on my table back there. I wanted to show you guys. If you have a Fox body that has a really shitty fuel gauge, it doesn't want to work or it's all over the damn place or it goes up and goes down and goes up and goes down. This is the slosh, slosh thing that goes on the back of the cluster. So if you're having fuel gauge issues, this is probably one of the issues that you have. What this is supposed to do is slow down the signal. Okay. This is supposed to slow down the signal. Of you know, because your 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 uh, your fuel level inside of your tank's always moving, right? And then you got the little float back there that sends the signal to this slosh. What this is supposed to do is slow it down so it doesn't move. If your gauge is all the way empty or all the way full or moving all over the place, it's probably your slosh gauge in the back of your cluster. So I wanted to show you that because I had it sitting out. Hashtag handling. Here we go. Let me pick a person. Let me go down. Where did, did we get them all? Hope I'm not chat lagging here. Good. I need some swag, buddy. 
Hashtag Hamlet. Here we go. MJP. Congratulations, brother. MJP. Let's just do a random. I can't do random org over here, though. <clears throat> So we're gonna we're gonna try to do this like every live stream. If I can get more banners, that would be cool. I don't know how much they are, but you know it is what it is. It's giving something back to you guys. You know what I mean? So if you win the banner, <clears throat> Neo Mustangs at Hotmail. It's also the email for merch if you want to get in on some merch. I'm terrible. I hate writing sideways. Anyways, moving on. Um, so MJP, congratulations. Hit me up uh, in the email and I will get this out to you tomorrow, whatever. I usually send this shit priority, so... You know, it's eight or nine bucks. Not a big deal. <laughs> Jimmer, you got two, haven't you? You won twice, I think. I just had to throw away my Ford Motorsports banner. He killed the Bama. Heat's no joke. No, no kidding. So um, what else do we have? The torque boxes on the list. Yes. The list is right here. This is what we got going on tonight. So let's talk real quick. We'll continue adding to the list, obviously. So the 410 Windsor, we do not have our cylinder head yet. So if you guys are just now joining the channel, we stick shift race our white car sitting over here on the uh, on the uh, on the lift, and we've had a head gasket issue for a, for a while. And one of the issues uh, we 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 figured out is we you know we popped more than one one uh, cylinder hole in, in 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 the car. It was um, you know you're going to see the <clears throat> in the last video we talked about on Saturday night. Um, I'll bring it up real quick. Oops. Hang on a second. We uh, ended up popping a cylinder head in multiple spots. And, you know, I'm a big advocate on if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But after doing my, after doing some, Apologies, guys. My apologies. I actually messed up the internet. I actually hit the cable. It's my fault. You guys good? Okay. Hey, Neo, uh, I raced yesterday's stick shift, had 50 cars. I went 0-1-2 red, third round, but had a blast with friends. Hell yeah, man. All right, Bama, it's good to see you, man. I appreciate you stopping in. So, where are we at here? So yeah, we um Well, that's not a good start. Mm. The other one didn't look that bad, right? 
if you get a chance to watch this video, we, we actually went through the top end of this. And you can see here, I went actually to the main or the machine shop. So this would have been. So this one here is the one that let number let five. A little bit of compression That's number out. five and number six Maybe actually lifted. It should have looked like this. That's what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, it's supposed to look so clear. But if you go back and look at the other head part of my head gasket, we actually like I guess pushed it. You guys seeing this, right? This is the actual file that I uploaded to YouTube. So. So I think I pushed it. It was like a thermal push or something oh, like that. Yeah. Something happened right there. That's number four on the back side. So that, that's the reason why we pulled that those heads off. And the fact that the springs legitimately were not right. They've been on there for like five years, four, four years. So I wanted to show you guys, you know, what had happened with the 410 and the reason why half of its parts sitting there on the floor. But um, legitimately, that's where we're at with it. You know, we still don't have our heads back yet. I know Dave is working pretty hard on, um, you know, getting the heads finished for me. But, you know, it's not looking good. So I got a big race this weekend. We'll be seeing you at No Prep Mania. You're going to see me anyways for show. Big shot to Stripper Glitter. What's going on, Steve? I appreciate you stopping in, man. <laughs> Lifting heads or gaskets are sweet. Yeah, I mean, you're the king at that. <laughs> so it didn't it affect the uh, compression test. So in that video, we went through all eight cylinders. And for whatever reason, um, you know, we lifted a head, but it didn't, it didn't affect my compression test. Does that sound right, Dan? I've got a question. Does anyone, does everyone crank until the gauge stops climbing or give it a certain amount of compression strokes? I actually just kept cranking on it to make sure I did it right. I don't know. Who's the guy on uh, 347 stroke calling you out? I don't know. So, as far as the black car is concerned, we just fixed the turbo on the black car. I'll show you this real quick. For you guys that haven't been able to watch any of the videos. Yeah, I don't know what happened. That wasn't actually internet. That was StreamYard. So, let me, let me go ahead and let it come back here. It just went out. I had internet. I don't know what the hell's going on. Anyway, um, going back to the black car. If I could get the right box. Why'd he go to that video? Always preaching about on the channel is get your get shit your off the jack stand. So hopefully today we're going to be able to get our black turbo fox body, which is our daily driver street car. And it's been in up for the last couple weeks because we've been so switching we between last week with turbos. Mike. We're hopefully here and to rectify that today. Stick around as we are going to actually put.
So we ended up putting a on three. This is really cool because on three actually what you have is probably sold kind of me the cartridge one. of the turbo. You can see they actually sold the center section. We actually have a rebuild kit, like a $20 rebuild kit from Amazon that I'm going to rebuild the old turbo with and probably give it away or whatever. But we ended up putting this turbo on the 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 black car as you see here. We we actually had to use the 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 housing. On three actually gave me the housing. So that was really cool. So we ended up uh, getting it put on and it, it was kind of a pain in the ass. And I'm not going to lie to you. There was one point in this video. I was being, I was churching it up boys. Legit. And a little bit with the drain and such. To be honest with you guys, I was not motivated to not do this motivated. project at all today. But this is After what I'm always talking about. This mess Get yesterday, whole top Fits. end of the motor being the tore apart. Man. You know, this is what we talk about on the channel, you know, buy once, cry once, and get your shit off the jack stands. So anyways, that this is what we did last week with the black car. We got this new, uh, this new 7875 uh, on three. This had an actual billet wheel on it. Uh, we started tuning a little bit this past weekend. It was pretty cool. It was, it was uh, a little rich because the, pre the precision turbos, obviously the compressor maps a little bit different. So we ended up going for a ride with it. Uh, we actually drove it a couple hundred miles this past week, and uh, yeah, that's the update on the uh, the black car. So, super happy to have that damn thing back on the road. Anyways, so uh, where are we at on a time crunch? Like I had just been saying. Um, like we don't have our cylinder heads back. I mean, uh, I got a no prep mania event this weekend, 7.5. It's a points race for you guys that don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, in collaboration with Tremec and Neo here on the channel, we're giving away a T56 Magnum for a point series. And we'll probably try to do this again next year. I can't really speak for Tremec right now, but uh, they may or may not be interested in doing that again next year with our stick shift stuff here in Ohio. So I'd like to get some of you boys down here in the South to come up. Or, you know, I already got some of the guys from Michigan in to come in, and I got a couple of guys from New York coming in. But uh, definitely would like to see some of the no prep crowd a little bit south, you know, make it worth your while to come up not only, you know, bang gears for some money and, you know, and some prizes, but the, you know, point series towards a transmission. So, I mean, I know it's only 3500 or four grand, but I mean, it's a free in transmission, dude, you know? So, <clears throat> what's up, Alex? I appreciate you from Puerto Rico. Good to see you. What's it mean if cylinder goes 170 in three strokes, but another one takes six? I never thought of it like that. So. Maybe an issue building PSI with rings or valve spring seating. You know, I did find about, and I will mention this with the white car. Um, I did find about three or four of the seats were shit. Matter of fact, I'm going to go just go ahead and tell you guys, we ordered all new valves. Like we weren't happy with any of them. There was a taper. It was about a one thou taper in the intake valve and about a one and a half to almost two in the exhaust. Here's the really cool part. that we're going to talk about in the video coming up is we actually, uh, we actually purchased oversized Ferrara valves and we'll be able to actually reutilize the uh, the intake guide that's kind of wore out a little bit. We'll be able to actually make the guide fit the valve, which will make it nice and like new and tight and straight again. So we're going to address the seats. That's what actual Dave, the mad scientist, is doing right now. He not only tunes with me with the cars, but he's got his own state-of-the-art machine shop, and he does a lot of cylinder head shit. So he's going to be doing, uh, you know, we're going to be putting all new valves in it. We're going to be uh, redoing the seats or at least setting the seats with the new valves. Um, the guides will be pretty much they're the older ones, but they'll be pretty much brand new because they'll be honed out and all new double springs. And we're going to go, we're going 225 500 from open closed. If you guys know what I'm talking about, almost like a solid roller spring. And we already have HLT uh, limited travels in there and they're already working like solid rollers anyways, under wide open throttle. So we think that's going to be a great combo. And I would think that motor will, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll pick its pet back up. I'll be super excited to see what the, that car does, boy. I mean, we went, we were going, 
we made some good time with that car, but it seems like, you know, just knowing that the car has been on three or four or three and a half years of the same valve spring just tells me that the thing's whooped. Hey, Neo said, uh, like Neo says, get your stuff off the jack stand. I had so much fun yesterday at the track uh, going a few rounds. That's what it's all about. I mean, I try to tell my buddy, you know, I tell my, try to tell my buddy Dan Watts sitting here in the Ferrara, 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 for, 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 aha, for, <laughs> what did you say? I, whatever. So, what tracks hold stick shift events? Um, D team, listen, uh, and I know Stripper Glitter's right here in the actual chat because I've seen him pop in here. And I know Jason Lizer, who is uh, Race Life Photos. Um, Jason Lizer is the um, part of the D team racing, and uh, Stripper Glitter is the company that, uh, in collaboration with D team, same people. Uh, D teams, the LLC that, that I can think I say it like that. I don't know, maybe wrong, but D team is the one who holds the event. So to give you an idea, Gabe, we D team actually comes out with a schedule every year here in Ohio. And we're, like I said, I, I told y'all we're spoiled here. This company has a schedule of 10 races that they run at different tracks. Some of them are back halves. Some of them are front halves. Some of them are eighth mile only. Some of them are a little sketchy. Some of them are really good. There's also a couple, a uh, couple outside of D team that they throw as well, like uncaged in this World Series of No Prep that Josh Robinson and OGR Ohio Grudge Racing, which you were at, that wasn't a points race, but that's a really big one. You see what I mean? They do a lot of back half, big money stuff. So. Um, there's a lot of shit going on in Ohio. If you guys are trying to get into a little bit of hard tire or stick, you know, stick shift, you know, no prep. And there's even some front half races that I would suggest you at least to try, you know, if you don't want to, you know, the, the, the thing about no prep is a lot of people get it all, you know, Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to race no prep because it's no prep and I'll wad my car up. Well, if you know how to drive your car, you're not going to wad your car up. I'm going to tell you that right now. <clears throat> I know things happen, but you know, you get a little squirrely, you get out of it, you let the race go. You know, it's just what you do. Some of these races, like the stoplight race that uh, that Brandon Cirillo actually throws over here at Quaker once a year at September, it's a really good one to at least go try. The Cumley front half that D team throws at the beginning of the year, really good front half to go try no prep. You know, it's 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 the safer, I guess you want to call it, of the no prep that you're going to see. Uh, I, I think Pacemakers is a really fast track, and it sticks really well after a few rounds. But, uh, you know, I don't want to encourage you to do something that you're not going to feel like you're safe at. But you know, no prep gets a bad rep for not being any prep. But yet we're everybody's <clears throat> everybody's literally littering traction compound 600 feet. So I don't know what happened to my chat. Maybe I'm just talking and nobody's and everybody's just listening. Anyways, let me go ahead and give away this other banner. We'll go over this list one more time. Um, again, stick shift stuff, guys, go follow, uh, you know, D team racing. They're on Facebook. They do a lot of stuff. They promote a lot of stuff more on Facebook than they do on Instagram or whatever. Um, be honest with you, go follow them up. You'll see what they promote. Uh, most of the, uh, you know, they, they, like I said, they do 10 races a year. What I did was, is me and Mike kid at Tremec decided that we're going to make a point series and we're going to give away the sponsor box and, I'm going to give away this T56 Magnum here in about two months. And right now, Cody Hartman's in the lead. I can't win it. All I'm there to do is play ringer. Um, we are going to make a trophy, though. So big shout out to Jerry Burke. A lot of stuff going on, man. Just a lot of stuff. It's just, it's, it's cool shit. It's race shit. It's, it's, it's fun. Uh, what aluminum heads, roller cam, and intake do you guys recommend for a stock bottom end? Uh, you could go as cheap as GT40 heads and intake. Um, in stock cam with rockers, or you can go e cam. You can throw pretty much anything at a stock bottom end to any walker, and it'll probably work just well. So, all right, we got a Tremic banner to give away. Hashtag Tremic. <coughs> this uh, this this banner giveaway is courtesy of Tremic Mike Kid at Tremic. So I appreciate Mike and Tremic for what they do for us here on the channel for show. Hashtag Tremic, boys.
Smell, smells like a banner. Hashtag Trumic. I'll let it run for a minute because I know chat lags. Make sure I got everybody in it. Six foot banner. I don't know why chat's lagging so much. If you if you previously won a Tremic banner, I'd appreciate you didn't go in. Let somebody else win one. What am I doing? I gotta fold this. I'd like to get a couple Team Z ones for next week. Maybe I can hit up Viking to send me a couple. I got one more McLeod left. Little garage swag boys. Might not be stick shift in your car, but it's still pretty cool shit. Yeah, I definitely think Team Z will probably send me a handful of them. They got other, they got a couple other ones too. Anyone ever had a stock proportioning valve stick and cause front brakes to lock up? Yeah, stock proportioning valves need to be gutted and cleaned often. Now you'd be surprised how much shit gets inside of a stock proportioning valve. Uh, all you have to do, I mean, just pay attention to the way the spring goes in. So. Super Dave, check your email. Would you consider building an OEM stock Fox body? You mean like a resto? Yes. Resto mod more than resto. Because a full restoration would be crazy. Be something I don't, I don't know if I'd be interested in. I got you, Mike, on the email. Appreciate it. Guys, once again, um, if you're looking to possibly purchase a transmission swap, like T56, TKX, whatever, uh, Neo 200 off, okay? That is the code at um, Hanlon Motorsports. So... Anyways, one thing while I let this run for a, a few more minutes, one thing I was going to tell you guys about stifflers. So big shout out to Brian and Tom Clark. I mentioned to earlier in the video or the live stream or whatever. So if you run a stifflers cross member, like naturally you probably wouldn't see something like this. Unless you um, really beat the shit out of your cross members, but you can see I really, I really jacked up that the bushings on both sides. These are like hardened plastic or whatever, but like I broke these bushings on this. This came out of my white car. I actually ended up putting the one from my black car that was a T fifty six swap. Anyways. I told uh, Stifflers about it, and they've been helping us on the channel for years. And Tom Clark and Brian sent me a – hold on a second. And I'm going to do a short on this, so make sure you guys watch it then too. I do want to mention to you guys here, they actually sell a hardware kit. I said you all new hardware and black uh, – uh, black plastic bushings and the red plastic bushings see that so that's pretty cool 
So if you have a Stiffler's cross member, know that you can get support from um, Stiffler's if there's any issues whatsoever. Got some keychains. Got some stuff to give away here. Oh, boy. <laughs> Appreciate that, Tom. So like I said, we're going to uh, we're gonna do a little short video on that. Magnafuel as well hooked, hooked us up too. So let me give away this banner real quick and I'll... Uh, We'll talk about the list and then we'll get it out. Let's get out of here. Shannon Adams, congratulations. You won the garage swag, the Tremec banner. I'll ship that out tomorrow. <clears throat> Send the email to Neil Mustangs at Hotmail. Right here. And let me know your address and which banner you want, and I'll send it out to you. Anyways. What do you say? I need a key. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, today's video was legitimately, or, or the live stream was, <clears throat> you know, to, to, to help you guys that may be getting into Fox bodies, may own a Fox body or, or don't really haven't experienced enough uh, with the Fox body to know, you know, what areas might be of concern. And that's why we, you know, this is, this is a topic we're going to continue to talk about. And we're going to revisit again uh, very soon on top of the hazards as well with the wiring, because I want to talk about that as well. Um, but strut towers, you know, torque boxes, this is something, strut towers you can physically see. Torque boxes you have to get underneath the car to look at. Um, there's definitely some signs of, you know, ripping and tearing going on back there. Sunroof has all kinds of problems we talked about earlier in the live stream with the drainage, the seals, the clips. I got the sunroof sitting right here on my black car on the ground for a reason. Uh, all your weather stripping pretty much is beat up in, in these cars at 35 years. I mean, if you haven't changed it yet, I guarantee that, you know, that rubber seen better days. <clears throat> roof wobble, you know, the brace on the roof, you know, wobbling around. If you got a roof wobble with your coupe or your hatch or whatever. So um, headlight problems. We talked about headlight problems, having the bucket messed up um, and, you know, getting yellow, getting water inside of them. There's ways to remedy that. The bumper brace. And guys, this is just the, the start. You know what I mean? This stuff here legitimately on this uh, on these whiteboards is to just get you guys kind of uh, familiarized with some of the shit that, you know, could go wrong or is wrong with your car that you don't even know about. So like GT headlight switch and ignition switch are literally a serious hazard in Fox bodies. If there was two things outside of torque boxes literally falling out of your car that I would tell you to look at, it's that. Because torque boxes fall out of your car, your car goes sideways. Your rag joint rips, you hit a wall. Your GT headlight switch or your ignition switch melt together, your bot, your car burns down. Those, I, I, if I had to choose the the most important ones today in this live stream, I would probably say those are your main. Th those three are your main issues: steering and fire. So, and this can go on for the whole Fox body genre for the most part, you know, I enjoy doing, you know, live streams that are kind of like a collaboration, like a working live stream where we're actually, you know, talking about, you know, I've, I've experienced probably, I've probably owned over 500 Fox bodies and seen a lot of them come and go. And I've seen a lot of issues and, and experienced a lot of shit on these cars that will just blow your mind. I mean, you know, sun visors. I've, I've watched sun visors literally start a headliner on fire. I've watched, you know, uh, you know, AC wide open throttle relay switches literally start smoking on the header because they were bare wires. And, you know, that's just going to back feed and just burn up all your wiring and all your, guess what happens to your battery. So 
I just, you know, again, you know, it's just trying to, you know, make sure that, you know, you're aware of some of these issues that may be a problem. But, you know, guys, if your shit's sitting on jack stands, you got to get it off. You know what I mean? You got to get it off the jack stands. You know what I mean? Get, get the shit fixed. Make a plan. You know, put a whiteboard up. Figure out what you're going to do. I got a lot going on back here, going on with my white car this week. You know, I, I did three videos last week. And I felt that, uh, you know, I still got two to do this week that I've already shot and filmed. And I really hope that, uh, you know, it, it helps somebody or helps you guys here on the channel. So I do appreciate it, you guys, for stopping in tonight. <clears throat> and uh, I do appreciate you guys that, uh, you know, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Um, if you were part of the the uh, the members chat, um, I appreciate, uh, the, you know, the guys in green are my channel members. So thank you guys so much for what you guys do for us on a monthly basis. You know, once again, we'll be, uh, you know, I'll be in members chat this week quite a bit. <clears throat> Mine just went back up on it. Oh, so I want to give a big shout out to Hanlon Motorsports. Let me tell you what. The guy has spent years or just getting this car right. And then his motor blows up and then he's down for like this whole year. He's missed a bunch of events. But like I tell him, you know, keep your head up, you know, make a list, check it twice, get the shit done. And he actually ended up finding out some really good information that he's going to probably share here on the live stream when we bring him in uh, sometime soon uh, that might help some coyote people that might have an issue with the, like an MSD two-step box stuff, it's stuff I definitely want to put on, you know, get out there because it took him a long time to fix, to actually find this information out, something about wiring and stuff. So it's, that's, that's what this community is all about, guys. It's all about, you know, trying to, uh, you know, trying to make it, you know, make a better community make it, make it better, uh, you know, information, you know, having the information out there and try to help somebody. So it's all about, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in this chair to help you guys here in, in the genre. So um, guys, I'm going to probably go ahead and get off the, uh, the, the live chat now. I want to, uh, I want to thank you guys for stopping in. I uh, appreciate everybody for joining tonight. Um, as far as video is concerned, we did a, another back half race that didn't go quite as planned that we're going to be doing this week. Uh, we're obviously going to be doing the video with the white car as we were in a crunch time to get that car to the track this weekend. So uh, look forward to seeing you guys in chat. Look forward to see you guys in comments. Um, this is actually going to be one of the uh, first live streams I'm going to, I'm going to convert to podcasts. So I don't know exactly. I don't know what to really expect with that, but we're going to try it out anyway. So, <clears throat> but anyways, um, guys stay motivated Get your shit off the jack stands. I love y'all. Appreciate everybody for stopping in tonight. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon this week in the next video. Have a good, have a good night.